page number 443, mm -hmm. book 6, book of fate, canto 2, the way of fate and the problem of pain. We are uh, reading Narad's reply to the Queen Mother. Right. In one call, is it is it cow call? Um, let, let's get the line where I... Uh, sorry, line number 225. Yeah, I can't find it this way, but I can find it in one call. Call. Call, okay. C-A-U-L, call, yeah. Yeah. We'll pick that up. In one call with joy came forth the dreadful power in life's breast. It was born hiding its twin. But pain came first, then only joy could be. Well, we have a couple of words here. We have okay. a call. Hmm. Call is um, this thin membrane hmm. that covers the head of a fetus at birth. Okay. 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 So we see that this call. Mm. In one call with joy came this dreadful power. Mm. Um, it's a strange statement. In yeah. other, what he is saying that is uh, this covering that covers us basically. Mm. With along with joy came forth this dreadful power, and Sri Aurobindo says power means strength and force, shakti, which enables mm. to face all that can happen, and to mm. stand and overcome, also mm. to carry out what the divine will proposes. Mm. It can include many things: power over men, events, circumstances, means, but all this not of the mental or vital kind, but by an action through unity of consciousness with the divine and with all things and beings. It mm. is not an individual strength depending on certain personal capacities, but the divine power using the individual as an instrument. Mm. Now, in life's breast, it was born hiding its twin. Mm -hmm. But pain came first, then only yeah. joy. Could be. We know that when the child, almost always when the child comes out of the womb, there's a cry. It cries when it comes into birth. Mm -hmm. now, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Pain comes first. Yeah. Only after that joy can be. Mm. Now he'll tell us a lot more about that. Pain cloud. The cloud. Cloud. That's the British cloud. 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 In, the, cloud. in, in, in English, we say P L O W for a plow. So pain cloud. Yeah. Cloud is the British pain. spell. Pain plowed the first hard ground of the world drows. By pain, a spirit started from the clod. By pain, life stirred in the subliminal, the intern, submerged, Let hidden me. in matter's trance. Okay. Awoke, Awoke to itself. The dreamer, sleeping mind, it made a visible realm out of its dreams. It drew its shapes from the conscious, from the subconscious depths. Then turned to look upon the world it had made. Oh, you went very far, and there's so much. That oh. I don't think we can get it all done today, but we'll try. Okay. So he capitalizes the word life. 
And I think we should go over life. Life itself here on earth is being at labor in matter to express mm -hmm. itself in terms of conscious force. Human life is the human being at labor to impress himself on the material world with the greatest possible force and intensity and extension. Then in the letters on yoga, he has two very important quotes. Life is the dynamic expression of consciousness force when thrown outward to realize mm -hmm. itself in concrete harmonies of formation. And then again, he says, life is not only a play of forces or a mental experience, but a field for the evolution of the concealed spirit. Very important. And he says in the life divine, two different quotes that are most important. Life is universal force, working so as to create, energize, maintain, and modify, even to the extent of dissolving and reconstructing substantial forms with mutual play and interchange of an overtly or secretly conscious energy as its fundamental character. So life can dissolve forms and reconstruct them. Even, and we've seen that in the evolution of the earth. How, mm. how the great mastodons are all gone from the earth. Mm. These huge creatures. We've seen other things that have disappeared. We've seen that uh, the sea has taken over islands and it's even made islands. Yeah. Life then is the dynamic play of a universal force, a force in which mental consciousness and nervous vitality are in some form, or at least in their principle, always inherent. And therefore they appear and organize themselves in our world in the forms of matter. And in Letters on yoga, he says, so beautiful. All life is a growth of the soul out of the darkness towards the light. Now, we didn't really get into the subliminal as yet. So shall I read from that? Or do you want to move on? We can move on. I think we also went through this like one other time around the subliminal, so I think we can move on. Okay. So interned means restricted or confined within mm -hmm. limits. Uh, prisoners of war, enemy alien, combat troops in a neutral okay. country are interned. And did we cover mm -hmm. matter? Did we ever cover matter? No, we have not covered matter. So we'll have to do that now, <clears throat> because Sri Aurobindo has much. Do you have your book? And I do have our Savitri book, but not. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, you have to get that from the lexicon. Me. Now that I'm traveling to Pondicherry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get it from her. Um, mm -hmm. Matter is by no means fundamentally real. Ah, it is a structure of energy. This, this whole section to me is so interesting because science has come to that, this finally. Yeah. Matter is the form of substance of being which the existence of Satchirananda, a trinity of existence, consciousness, and delight, assumes when it subjects itself to this phenomenal action of its own consciousness and force. Matter is the body or field of a consciousness hidden within it. The material universe, a form and movement of the spirit. Oh, God. Now, 
The creative energy in matter is a movement of the power of the spirit. Matter itself cannot be the original and ultimate reality. At the same time, the view that divorces matter and spirit and puts them as opposites is unacceptable. Matter is a form of spirit, a habitation of spirit. Matter is only so much mobile energy vibrating intensely into form. So we see a desk or a chair and we think it's a desk and a chair and all it is is a mobile energy vibrating intensely into form. We can see here how, how vast Sri Aurobindo's consciousness is. Mm. He's writing this in the 1940s. Yeah. When science had no idea of this. <laughs> and he says uh, in Essays Divine and Human, matter is but a form of consciousness. Mm. And then he says in the synthesis of yoga, matter is a formation of life that has no real existence apart from forming universal spirit which gives it its energy and substance. And in synthesis again, he says, in fact, matter itself is only an obscure form of the spirit. If we could understand that, it would be incredible. Wow. For there seems to be no reason why life should evolve out of material elements or mind out of living form, unless we accept the Vedantic solution that life is already involved in matter and mind in life, because in essence, matter is a form of veiled life. Life, mm. a form of veiled consciousness. How beautiful. Yeah. So then he says, uh, after all of this, and we still have mind to go, but that's so long that uh, we have mind and we have the subconscious that perhaps we ought to leave that for another time. Yeah, and I think we maybe not covered the entire section, but I think you had uh, taken uh, and read a little bit of mind and also subconscious, sub, like at some point. Oh, very good. Okay. Good. Yeah. So then... I'm not sure about the mind, but definitely like we had gone through subconscious. Okay, so let's go on three more That's lines and, and we'll quit after yeah. three lines. And there's just very little to explain here. So anyway, what Narad is telling is that um, this dreamer, sleep mind, uh, that is uh, actually... And, and life itself is hidden in matter. And that's what he just explained. It's hidden yeah. in matter's trance. And, and then it awakes to itself this sleeping mind. And it makes a visible realm out of its dreams. It drew its shapes from the subconscious depths. Then it turned to look upon the world it had made. And so now he's going to tell us more. Mm -hmm. So you have By to. By pain and joy, the bright and tenebrous twins, the intimate, in the inanimate world perceived its sentient soul. Else, had the inconscient never suffered change. Good reading. Good reading. Tenebrous is dark and gloomy. Huh? Mm. So you have pain is the tenebrous twin and joy is the bright twin. Yeah. So pain and joy always accompany each other, it seems, that he's saying. Mm. The inanimate world perceived its sentient soul. So he says through pain and joy, these mm. two these two bright and tenebrous twins, the inanimate world perceived its sentient soul. 
Now, inanimate is not alive. It could mm-hmm. even be spiritless or lacking activity or life. And it's often huh. figuratively used. Okay, so it means not of life. Yes, in the inanimate world is, is, is actually yeah. not animate or alive, yes. Yeah. And then it's perceived. It's, to perceive here is a little different than most of our senses, but it's to achieve understanding of, to, to apprehend something. So then the inanimate world apprehended, understood its mm. sentient soul. And sentient is having the power of sense, perfe- sense perception or sensation. It's mm-hmm. con- conscious. Okay. If that had not happened, if that, <clears throat> if that inanimate world had never perceived its sentient soul, then mm-hmm. conscient never, would never have suffered change. Mm. So it's a very interesting point, a very, very interesting point. And let's go on three more lines. We'll, we'll, we'll take up the unconscious next time. Yeah, but I just wanted to uh, check in if this is like how I understood is uh, yeah. by pain and joy, the birth and the, the bright and tenebrous twins, the inanimate world perceived its sentient soul. So, because uh, uh, the sentient, inanimate world perceived its sentient soul. So, even the inanimate uh, perceived the sense. Is that what is meant? Else, if it had not done, then the inconscient would never go through change. Is that what is being Yes, supported? exactly. Okay. First of all, it's by pain and joy. Yeah that the inanimate world perceives its sentient soul, yeah. its conscious soul. Got it. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, the unconscious would never have suffered change. Allowed, yeah. suffered here is allowed. Mm. Uh, ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, because that's a different use of the word suffered. Um, in the Christian thinking, in the Christ says, um, Suffer the little children to come to me, which mm-hmm. means allow the little children to come children. to me. Mm, okay, got it. So, good. Pain and, is the hammer of the gods to break a dead resistance. In the mortal's heart, his slow inertia of, an, of, his slow inertia as of living stone. Yeah, resistance, resistance. Resistance. No, resistance. I think it's a more of a re, but we can re, check. Res, resistance. Well, uh, let me just check it up. It will just take a, a new case. Resistance. It is resistance. Resistance. Okay. Resistance. Great. 